This creates that extra hang time effect. This is literally one minute after the last fish. <laughs> Good morning everyone! Here we are gonna do another day of exciting spring fishing. Fishing on the shallows has been really productive the past couple of days with a mix of results. Sometimes we found the fish on the deeper edges, sometimes we found them super super shallow at like 60 centimeters of water. Um, today we are fishing at a very very secret spot. We are gonna do some jerkbait fishing today. To me and I think to France as well, jerkbait fishing is one of the most fun ways to fish early spring. Uh, the ability to you know play with the speed, with the swimming motion. It's a bit of a can of mouse game between the pike and the angler. Jerk baits are I think the most ideal tool early spring to fish on the shallows because you can control the depth, you can control the speed, you can control the hang time which is super important with jerk baits. Hopefully we can show you some pike in front of the camera as well. Uh, it's a bit colder than it was the days before. Uh, it should be 14 degrees today. So hopefully today we kind of find some pike that are active. We're gonna show you some tactics, some uh, some jerk baits that we like to use. We're gonna explain why we like to use them, what the benefits of those different jerk baits are, and hopefully throw some big fish in the mix as well. So I am gonna head out towards the uh, first spot that I can only find by using my GPS. The world is a bit small. I'm gonna head out and hopefully start catching some fish. We just arrived at the first spot. So what you want to try and do in this time of year, early spring, is you want to try and find the vegetation. So what we did, we drove the boat, looked at the side imaging, and tried to spot on the shallows where we could find some vegetation, some grass growing on the bottom. For pike and for other predatory fish, it's essential to spawn before the bait fish spawn because then the small pike will hatch, and they want to hatch them in um, areas that are rich of vegetation. So what they usually try to do is try to find the vegetation because these are usually the spawning grounds and also the areas where the pike later on can lie in wait to ambush the bait fish. So we tried to find the vegetation on the side imaging. I can see if I can get some on the bottom. But... This is what you want to find. All grass, all vegetation that has not completely died off. It can differ from season to season. Um, when you have a warm winter like we have now, usually the vegetation doesn't die off that much. If it's very, very cold and a lot of storms and stuff, your vegetation gets washed away. And then it's harder to find spots like these. But here, there's a lot of vegetation on the bottom. Really cold. I can barely feel my hand. It's misty, so it's moist and it's cold AF. Well, fuck this. <laughs> Hobo power. Hobo? <laughs> Pool's closed. Yeah. Oh, good. Here. Right to hold. Disc. Yeah, nog een keer eraan. Yeah, good. Nog een keer. Yeah, nog een keer. Woo. <laughs> 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 it took the jerk bait. Three times before it finally hit the treble. Nailed it! <laughs> My hand is even colder now, <laughs> but at least we found some pike. We are both fishing with a gator jerk at the moment, which is 15 centimeters. It's quite a thick jerk bait, a bit thicker than you would normally see in the industry. 
has a lot of, a lot of small metal balls inside, so it makes a ton of noise. And as Frans likes to call it, it's an old man's jerk bait. You can just reel it in and it will move correctly. You can mix it up a little with tapping it lightly with your rod tip, but you don't need to. You can actually reel it in spin fishing style, just move it with the, uh, with the slinger of your reel. Out of nowhere, out of the blue. Out of the white. <laughs> Another yank on the yanka. Unhook this baby. Up again. <laughs> Lost the big fish. Few meters from the road, uh, from from the blender, a Few meters from the boat, big hit, big swirl, nice big tail, two head shakes, gone. Let me tell you something about jerkbaits, guys. One of my favorite ways of fishing early spring. Jerkbaits give you the ability to fish them at a variety of different speeds. You can slow them down. You can speed them up. Uh, especially jerkbaits that you can hover with a bit of hang time are excellent to use in early spring. I use a variety of jerk baits and you can actually specify them in two different types of jerk baits. Um, for me, you have the hybrid jerk baits and gliders. You would also have divers. Personally, I don't use them that often. Uh, let's start off with the gliders, the ones that are the easiest to fish. Um, one of my all round favorite gliders, which I use year round, is the Savage Jerkster. Um, there's a reason why I have four of these jerk baits lying around in the boat. They are quite versatile because in the back you have a small plastic cap which you can pull out and then you can add extra weight in the form of metal balls or plastic balls if you want to change the sink rate of the jerk bait and also if you want to add extra noise to the bait so it has like that extra attractive sound that it makes underneath the water once you start jerking it around. Um, most of the time I actually fish the jerkster without any extra added weight in it because I like to fish it as high as possible towards the surface. Now with the water still being quite cold you need to be a bit closer towards the fish so I just let the bait sink down a bit more and to create that effect I use some extra sinkers inside. Before we start talking about more of these, uh, these jerk baits I am fishing it with a quite a long rod. I'm using the Savage Gear Power Game and this rod has 110 gram casting weight. I'm sure the rod is stiffer and some jerk baits require a stiffer rod. But another glider that has been super successful for me, this is a Robertson lure. It looks like a manta that you had back in the days where you needed to order from the US. Um, this one has a really, really slow side by side glide. Um, early spring, when the water is really cold, where you can present it super slow on the shallows and this creates that extra hang time effect. You can pause this bait for like two, three seconds and then it just slowly wiggles down like this. That actually tends to trigger the fish that are slower than normal because sometimes those fish are not in the feeding mode and they need to get a free opportunity to fill their bellies a bit more and having a bait that has that enormous long hang time can be really successful during uh, during certain slow days. Sometimes you need to fish it really fast, sometimes you need to slow it down, but then again, that's the benefit of fishing with jerk baits. Uh, another glider that I've been using this spring is the Gator Jerk. Um, this has a lot of balls inside, makes a ton of noise, and this is in one of the most ugliest colors out on the market, I think. This is a UV color called Yanka, I think. I don't know what the word means, but it's Scandinavian, I reckon. Um, this is a really easy to fish jerk bait. You can just reel it in and it starts to move already. Same goes with the jerkster. This is a bit bigger than the jerkster. The jerkster is 14.5 centimeters. This is 15 centimeters, but this is a lot thicker, so it moves a lot more water. I'm cheating. Of course, we're talking about jerk baits. This is a glide bait. Some would say it's a swim bait, but I fish it as a jerk bait. If you slowly retrieve it and give it just a little jerk with the rod tip, move the, the, the rocker of the reel a little bit, it goes from side to side. It's the Lucky Lures Roach in a goldfish color. 
I'm a fan of all these bright colors. I really like something that stands out. Something uh, new for me this season. It's also in the category of an old man's jerkbait. 17 centimeter jerkbait by uh, Tasty Lures. Handmade in, uh, in Sweden. Pike colored, has really nice side to side action. When we move towards hybrid jerk baits, um, one of my all round favorites is the, uh, the good old striker. Um, this is from a Dutch guy called Rob Kraaiveld. Um, this lure has been amazing for me the past couple of years, uh, for buddies of mine as well. Uh, this is one of the best hybrid jerk baits that you can get. This one is superb to fish on the drop off, but also on the top of the weed lines. Because this is, especially with the two trebles underneath it now, and a fluorocarbon leader, this is almost completely suspending. So when I fish it down like this, I can let it hang down like this, get a cup of coffee or something, come back and the bait is still at the same position. Um, that insane hang time is super effective in spring, but year round as well. Um, the fact that I can fish it a bit more downward when I give it long hard pulls, I can play around with the depth of the bait as well. And at the same time when it goes down, it also moves sideways and it has a wobble. Insanely good jerk bait, handmade, like I said, but made with some tender loving care. Superb jerk bait, not super long, uh, not a gigantic profile, but it does catch really, really big fish. We got the ASOX Inc, the Lily XL. As you can see, similar model as all the other hybrids. It's round, um, it has a fat hat, a slim tail. This one moves a bit more erratic, has a long glide towards the side. I think uh, I can get it to around three, four meters. I really like to fish this one at uh, drop-offs near rocks. I've had some amazing fishing on these in Sweden, especially on the rocks during sunny days. But if the fish are a bit more deeper, I like to use this jerk bait, a bait from Rosenmeyer. It's called a Tybrit. I think the story behind this jerk bait is that it used to be a crankbait, but the lip broke off, and they noticed that the crankbait without a lip actually worked really well as a hybrid jerk bait. The benefit of this thing is that it dives down quite deep. It sinks, so it doesn't have that hang time. Uh, when you jerk it, it's quite erratic, then it goes deeper and deeper as well. You can fish these on drop-offs from 3 to 4, maybe even 5 meters. You won't get, get towards 5 meters, I think, but you will get the fish that are lying on the 5 meters of water. Um, it has a, a lot of balls inside as well, so it makes a lot of noise too. And this one moves really erratic from side to side, and it's, it's a bit more difficult to fish, I think. Um, especially when you want to make it move in a specific way. But this is a uh, bait that, that lures the fish from the deep, especially in early spring season when the fish are not really massively on the shallows. You want to get them off the drop off. And then the bad boy, the doom bell. Really, really easy bait to be fishing. Just cast it out, reel it in, stop retrieving, twitch it a bit. Yeah, it just wobbles like a, like a soft bait, really. And uh, because it doesn't move from side to side, the strikes are often very hard. You don't lose a lot of fish on these because, uh, well, they don't move from side to side, so the pike hits it. We're starting to lose fish. A really, really, really nice fish. Just 10 meters in front of the boat. It, it engulfed it and I tried to set the hook and I just smashed it out of its, out of its mouth. And it Not a long fish, but a super heavy fish. Look at this. Let's take some photos and put her back into the water. Another one on the general review part. Yeah. 
You didn't expect it. Oh, it's a good fish. It's a good one fish. Just tried out a new spot and then uh, I threw my jerk bait against the rock. But look at the rock bend. Wow. Ooh. It's a good fish. Again, hooked in the, in the rear treble, so it's a bit spooky. Um, I think we should have the net. We got the third meter plus bike of the day, I think. Uh, saw a fish, hit the jerk bait close to the rocks, actually, just smacked it. France made a good point that the fish probably came from the deeper water, the area where the sun is shining on the rocks the entire day because it usually warms up a little. And exploring new spots, trying new stuff. Usually it doesn't work. But sometimes you find new clues or new ideas and then when it does work, wow, look at that fish. Maar die jankt er al. I'm really falling in love with this little jerk bait. Just look at it. It's so ugly. You gotta love it. This jerk bait is so woke. Even Joe Biden will fish with it. You know the, you know the thing. Big bike, small bike, this jerk weight is so inclusive. Literally the first cast after the release of the other fish. Really grateful uh, to be borrowing. He's borrowing my bait, for fuck's sake. Frans kept on fishing with my uh, beautiful looking all-inclusive Yanka. The gator jerk in the ugliest color on the planet. So I couldn't keep up. So I switched to another gator jerk like this, uh, which doesn't have the beautiful inclusive color as the uh, Yenka. The first cast had a fish following straight away. And I think the fish dove underneath the boat and just went straight for the uh, the woke jerk bait. I can't do anything about this. <laughs> I'm getting beaten to shit. Small little guy, but a lot of fun. Put the baby back. This is literally one minute after the last fish. The Yanka. The Yanka Gator Jerk. The most inclusive jerk there is. Wow, what a day. <laughs> yeah, we missed so many fish, especially in the morning. Uh, but in the afternoon as well, like the fronts was on fire, Jesus. So many fish on that ugly fucking jerk bait. Uh, it, was, uh, it was great fun, we had wonderful weather again. I mean, in the morning it was cold, it was really chilly. I really felt for Franz in his jeans and the weather predictions were a bit off. Once the sun came through, the activity went up as well. We had that big bonus fish on that new spot that we tried. Caught a really, really fat fish, but most of all, we caught a lot of fish. We had a lot of takes. And you do need to keep in mind that this is the Netherlands. This is not Sweden, where you can go out and catch a hunter pike with a jerk bait on a brackish piece of water. Um, in the Netherlands, it's quite unique to, to see 20, 30, 40 fish throughout the day. And um, yeah, it's unique. Uh, we definitely cherish this uh, this style of fishing. It's still early spring, so who knows what we'll bring the coming weeks. Iceberg, right ahead! Especially if the bigger fish are gonna move up towards the shallows. That could be amazing, but we'll have to check that out in the coming days. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.